So uh, one second on PJ Solomon. We're an investment bank. Uh, that means we focus on mergers and acquisitions and capital raises. Uh, we are focused, um, our group, Media Services, is focused primarily on in-store media and out-of-home media. So we've got uh, about 60-ish investment bankers and probably around seven, actually seven, who focus on in-store media and out-of-home media. So it's a pretty big team, uh, but we like to live and breathe the sectors we cover, and we like to think we live and breathe this one. So uh, as a firm, though, as a group, uh, the Global uh, Media Services Group, we focus on, as I said, out-of-home retail tech. You can see some of the subsectors that we focus on. Um, it's everything from tomorrow, actually. We're in New York at the Point of Care Media Conference, uh, Point of Care screens, advertising in doctor's offices and hospitals, um, but obviously classic out of home as well. Uh, so if you think of where, um, you know, where things are going, and, and you've probably seen this slide before or something similar to this, it's, it's really uh, Facebook and Google taking every new dollar of ad spend. Um, if you think about what's happening to the ad market, and you look in general at what's happened to the ad market, it seems as if Google and Facebook are taking everything, uh, and they are. Um, so every new dollar, it seems, is going to them. That's about 30% uh, in, in 2017 that's going to the, um, uh, the bucket that we associate as mobile and online video. And believe it or not, by 2022, so that's in about four years from now, uh, four and a half years from now, we believe that 75 to 80% of ad spend will be in that mobile and online video bucket. It's pretty scary if you think about that. So it really means that there's only going to be about 20% left for every other media channel. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, actually, we'll talk about it. Oops. We'll talk about that right now. So if you look at this chart right here, this talks about the media channels. You can see that every classic media channel is shrinking or flat right, over the next few years. Um, and if you think about, uh, so that we're looking at growth rates uh, at the bottom here, you can see that over the next few years, the only channel so classic media channel that we see growing is out of home. And that's largely associated with the growth in digital out of home. But if you look at, uh, if you look at the growth rates of the sort of online uh, and mobile or digital and mobile channels, you know, the total digital bucket is going to be 170 billion. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty big growth rate, but also pretty big size and overall dollars of the bucket. So what's happening? Why is that happening? So if you think of, and you know all this, so we'll spend 10 seconds on this, but it's obviously um, a different consumer. People have, you have a different consumer and you have a different way for them to consume content, right? So this, this consumer is consuming content very differently than we did when we were young. And so if you think about what they do, they watch TV or video on a laptop or on an iPad or a device, a mobile device. That really changes their attention span, how they think about consuming content, their choices, their tastes. And we love this slide. We put this slide in front of, um, we created this slide and we put this in front of other media channels. So while I said we live and breathe out of home, we also cover the other media channels. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost interesting, the look of panic uh, when you put something like this in front of those in the TV sector. But um, you're really seeing what's happening uh, with the way that people are consuming, young people are consuming content today, right? They are, the argument is that young people today are missing out on all the TV advertising and branding that we used to consume um, as young adults and children. So 230 hours of commercials are avoided in homes that are streaming only. And we'll get to some of the data of what's happening to homes uh, right now. So if you look at uh, what's happening and how consumers are spending their time, you're seeing as well uh, the number of hours of digital media uh, that continues to increase. What's interesting here is when you look at TV, um, this is also including both linear and nonlinear TV. So it's actually, um, and by the way, these are numbers that are our numbers that, are con uh, that come from a variety of sources that we've benchmarked. So sometimes you see um, much more drastic versions of this, but this is more or less a benchmarked version or sort of an average of where you see people spending their time. And obviously print, you know, decreasing rapidly um, over time. So if we think of, of traditional media, now we like to say traditional media is dying. We believe that. So when we talk about the 2022 number and we say that 80% is going to be in that digital media and mobile bucket, you have 20% left for everybody else. And that includes television, uh, newspapers, radio, out of home. You know, that's, that's really um, a scary thought. And um, a lot of this is happening because of the idea of you can consume content when you want, how you want, uh, where you want, on your schedule. So really, the, the concept of appointment programming is really what's hurting 
uh, traditional television or linear television. Yeah, out of home is traditional media. We well, we we well. Let's be let's be sensitive to that. Out of home is not on this page, uh, and the reason out of home is not on this page is we believe very much in line with what Nancy said yesterday. The sector is is growing nicely. Sectors had continuous growth. You know, four percent market share is actually quite good. If you look at these other classic media channels, their their share of the market continues to shrink. When you look at Google, Facebook, and these online and mobile buckets taking share, they're taking share from these channels, right? And arguably, Out of Home has done a very nice job of maintaining that share. But what worries us is what happens when these channels can no longer get those dollars no longer fall from those channels, or what happens when um, you have you have friction, a recession, anything that sort of um, comes into play that could change the course. Uh, if there's not enough collaboration, as, as was discussed yesterday, yeah, there's, there's, we have real concerns. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but, but I think the biggest challenge we see, though, and we've said this, I don't know if anyone's read our book yet, but um, the biggest challenge for these other channels is that technology is not their friend, right? Out of home, technology is clearly a friend, whether you have digital out of home, you know, tr classic static out of home. We, we see technology as a friend to the entire industry. But... Um, but we, we definitely have concerns about it at home. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So if you think about uh, TV audiences, what's happening with television. So in the last several years, um, we've, we've tracked the data. You have 25 million viewers that have been lost from, from major TV programming. Um, if you see you know, the Oscars, the Grammys, audiences shrinking, rapidly shrinking. But yet somehow, when you see these numbers in terms of shrinkage, you're also seeing CPMs, because obviously as the audiences shrink, um, and pricing remains the same. It's getting very expensive to reach the same, or, or sorry, a shrinking audience of consumers. But somehow, television continues to get large dollars. So we see that bucket shrinking rapidly. So as you've pointed out, when you look at where, that, where the dollars are gonna come so that mobile and online video will get to 80%, a lot of it's gonna come from television, and that's a massive uh, $60 billion bucket. But it's not all gonna come from television. So especially as some of these programming models continue to change. So if you think about CPMs, though, it's, 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 it's definitely concerning for television. And again, we put this chart um, in, front of, in front of television uh, executives. And you know, for them, it's concerning as they see their audience shrink. Even though it's slow shrinkage today, we think it's going to become much more rapid in the next few years, especially as younger audiences sort of migrate and new younger audiences who don't even understand the concept of advertising and television um, continue to evolve. Yes? Yeah, I mean, that should, that should impact pricing. Um, you know, I think they have no choice because they need to try to make their content seem more exclusive. Um, but again, we, we see a situation here. The, the biggest concern for television we just see is that um, audiences continue to shrink, but also uh, new media over-the-top programmers um, are coming out with so much content and have such big budgets for their content um, it's going to become increasingly difficult for classic television, broadcast television, linear television to reach an audience. Very hard. There's just going to be so much competition. And the marketing budgets of uh, companies like Netflix and Amazon are so large uh, that it's going to become very difficult uh, for these companies to compete. So if you think of pay TV households, I'm sure you've seen this data, and, th and this is the point, is that consumers are continuing to opt out of these sort of uh, 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 classic television models, cable, cutting the cord. You've, you've seen all that. Uh, newspaper continues to decline, you know, massive, massive shrinkage there. And, and that's, been, that's been helpful as these new media buckets have taken over and taken share. But that's what worries us, right? There's only, at some point, this is going to level off. Um, the, the decline has accelerated materially for print in the last several years. But at some point, again, they'll run out of dollars to take from those channels. And then out of home, in our view, is next. So, and by the way, radio is another one. If you look at radio audiences, what's happened here? Um, the, this, this chart is actually interesting because it actually includes satellite radio. If you pulled satellite radio out of this, um, you'd probably see a much, much different looking chart. But radio audiences, in our view, um, has really, really been challenged and, and a lot of compression there in terms of the audience. And again, it's how consumers are consuming um, audio. And with streaming media now finding its footing in terms of having a pay model, uh, we think there's going to be continued shrinkage um, in AM, FM radio and terrestrial radio. So, um, so we get into now, it's not all, it's not all great for out of home. 
Um, so if you think about a poem, traditionally, and we've obviously been covering this sector for, for about eight years, we've always said, and we used to say publicly, if you've seen some of our presentations going back seven or eight years ago, we used to say that out of home followed GDP. So if GDP was good, out of home was good. Um, but that's not necessarily the case anymore. We're starting to see less of a correlation um, in terms of, um, in terms of, of growth. So out of home, um, you know, coming out of the recession, grew nicely, um, even at outpaced GDP growth. But if you look going forward, right, um, it's lag GDP growth. So GDP growth, um, if you think about GDP growth, the, the economy is booming nicely. Out of home is sort of, it's growing, but just barely at the rate of inflation. So um, for us, there needs to be more growth. Um, how do we get back to that? We actually don't see that happening anymore. We don't see out of home being tied to GDP growth anymore. So the correlation that we used to talk about, in fact, when we met with private equity firms and investors, um, public investors, we used to say, oh, just, you know, if GDP is going to be good, which we foresee in certain markets, and we're actually selling a business right now in Eastern Europe um, and out of home with 5% GDP growth, that business, there is still a beautiful correlation. Um, but there's no longer that correlation here in the Americas. So um, it's, definitely, it's definitely a trend that we think has been an, impacted by these newer media channels. Um, and then let's talk about local for, for a couple minutes. Um, in terms of local, uh, local has lagged national. Um, if you think about local overall, well, within, and this is the overall industry, by the way. This is not, uh, when I say the overall industry, the overall advertising industry. This is not at a home specific. Um, this looks at the local advertising market in general. Uh, local as a whole is, is not growing as fast as national. So if you look across the United States, um, look across every media channel, uh, local is not growing as quickly. But then if you look at um, you know, overall what's going to happen here in terms of, of national and local, both are going to continue to grow. Uh, but, and local will grow, but not nearly as fast as national. And so when we talk about channels overall, um, across um, this country, we tend to see national as growing, as, and we tend to be much more bullish on national. Now, many of you in the audience here, but general and out-of-home don't fully agree with that, and we respect that, and we understand that, because local is such a big part of out-of-home. In fact, we were talking to an executive just before this presentation who said when they think of national, they think of it as LA and New York. Um, but for us, you know, we obviously cover every media channel. And so for us, we're spending time with Google, Facebook, but others who think of national advertising in terms of growth and where they're spending time. In fact, when you think of um, some of these major distribution companies, you know, Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, you know, they're very focused also on this national market advertising, obviously. Um, so for them, whether it's New York, LA, but other key markets that they identify as markets they want to be, um, make sure they're part of. We continue to see national being um, you know, strong in terms of overall advertising, certainly as the economy um, is there. And if you think of, as we just mentioned, media and tech companies who invest in out of home, you know, these are some of the companies we just mentioned. Um, you know, that's, that's obviously encouraging, and we obviously are out talking to everybody about what you see on this slide. Um, we are very bullish on the industry, but we are also concerned that you know, many of these same companies that are spending money here uh, are very focused on um, their brand, but they're also focused on accountability. And obviously don't need to uh, continue to talk about accountability and how important it is uh, within out of home, but um, it continues to be important as you compare channels. Uh, it's increasingly important for these companies and other companies to want to make sure that you know, there's a nice ROI behind their spend. So we're getting to the end here. I don't know if there's, I'll pause for a minute before we continue if there's any questions. Otherwise, I'll keep racing ahead. All right, good. So pause this for out of home, and then we'll get into the, uh, um, what we call the negatives, but challenges, negatives. But in terms of positives, obviously uh, the beauty, and we just actually said this uh, working on a piece with the OAAA, in terms of the ability to aggregate an audience. You know, in our view, um, especially as you think of television, we used to uh, meet with executives and with um, CMOs who used to say, look, television, we used to go in there and talk about it at home. And, you know, their view was television was, was um, the answer. I think everybody realizes now today you can no longer aggregate an audience on television. So where are you going to aggregate an audience today? Um, in our view, and I think a lot of the executives are starting to share this view, we've seen a big change in the last 12 to 24 months. We're actually getting phone calls from some of these bigger companies saying, hey, we, we know you, you spend a lot of time out of home. We'd actually like to talk to you about it. So maybe their CMOs or their marketing teams are aware of out of home, but the actual senior executives of these companies are not really aware of it. And their, their CMOs and their uh, marketing teams are coming to talk to them about the value of reaching an audience in, on the go in the physical world. Um, we're coming and talking to them. So I think, I think everybody realizes, and we saw it actually yesterday, I don't know if you saw the video that Jeff Gunnerman did, 
But even within Out of Home, as you walk through, there's just so many messages. How do you stand out today uh, as a brand? I think that's the biggest concern that many of these big and small media companies that we cover, uh, their biggest concern is how do you stand out? People are receiving 5,000, some cases 10,000 messages a day. How do you stand out? Um, so our view, again, with Out of Home, you do have the ability to stand out. Uh, there are certain parts of Out of Home that we like better than others, but uh, you don't have ad blocking. Obviously, everyone knows that. Um, but certainly, the challenges uh, that we see are also about having this unified voice. We think a lot of that will be fixed through M&A. We think there's going to be continued consolidation in Out of Home. Uh, we see companies being acquired um, in Out of Home, both consolidation within the sector. We think that others will come into the sector. We talk to some radio, TV, broadcasting companies who have uh, classic uh, sales forces who say, well, we need to get into out of home now because if that channel has growth and technology is a friend, we, we need to diversify. And our existing sales force can take that over. So they're actually, we, we got a call a few weeks ago from a traditional classic radio broadcasting company that also has some television legacy, historical television. And they said, you know, we want to get back into out of home. Can you find us a $250 million company focused on local market advertising? We said, no, it doesn't exist. We can find you a bunch of $25, $30 million companies maybe, but a $250 million advertising company and local, other than you know, some of the bigger companies that could be broken apart, it doesn't exist. So, but there will be potential M&A, um, and, and we are, we're excited about that because that's how we make money, right? We advise on the M&A. So that's certainly why we want to spend a lot of time in this sector because we see a lot of potential M&A activity. Uh, when you think about the negatives, so, you look at that revenue growth, we are concerned by that. We look at the revenue growth of publicly available companies. We also cover some of the mid-level companies and, and we talk to them about their revenue growth. You know, big challenge in this industry is, is the industry in terms of, of top line revenue growth is really growing at the rate of inflation. To us, that means there's really no growth in the industry. So how do, how do, we, how do we turn that around and see more growth? We actually think there's gonna be a big change in the next 12 to 24 months in terms of how the media is continuing to be bought and sold. We're seeing a lot of good examples in Europe uh, where automated buying, um, you know, using software, um, tastes in terms of how things are being bought and sold, all, all improving um, and changing the industry. And so we see a lot of that potential here in the US as well. So that's encouraging. Um, we've obviously, uh, digital penetration, we think, is going to continue to increase, uh, which will be great as long as it doesn't cannibalize um, others in the industry. Um, autonomous vehicles. So we've said this publicly and privately. We don't see it as a big issue. It's certainly an issue down the road. Um, when I mentioned we're getting calls from, from companies, we're not getting calls from Ford, unfortunately, or GM or anybody like that yet, but we would love those calls. Um, but it certainly would be concerning for you if we were getting those calls, or maybe not. Uh, but at some point, we do think that autonomous vehicles are going to create an opportunity to obviously see um, new entrants into the advertising sector, uh, certainly challenges for out of home. We don't see that happening in the next few years. Our view is it's probably 20 years down the road, but, uh, but it's certainly a long, long-term risk. Um, in terms of market perspective, balance sheets in this sector, uh, clearly uh, there are company, you know, a company, obviously we've seen what's happened uh, with one of the larger companies in the sector whose parent company is restructuring right now. That'll be really interesting to see what happens in terms of balance sheets. We think there needs to be um, some deleveraging, obviously, in the sector. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. That means there'll be new investors coming into the sector, which will be really interesting, who will want to create um, opportunities, whether it's M&A, investing in digital. Uh, that will be pretty powerful. The one thing that we've tried to do um, publicly uh, is there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace in terms of, uh, of that company because its parent company is restructuring. Everybody needs to understand that the out-of-home company is actually healthy, um, doing well. Um, you know, the view, sometimes that can uh, be confused on the street. So that's where we can be helpful as well uh, when talking to investors in terms of the fundamentals of out-of-home. And we are very encouraged by the fundamentals. Um, as we mentioned, though, we are concerned by the limited revenue growth. But the good news is... Um, as we see some of these new buying methodologies, as we see some of these new, uh, whether it's mobile ad retargeting, whether it's um, you know, some of the challenges that the other uh, companies, uh, other media channels are facing, all that's going to help the industry, um, particularly as you think about uh, Google and Facebook. They also have their own challenges. And you know, we are out there uh, talking about those challenges as well in terms of how they are going to be addressed. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. The good news, though, and again, this is um, some, some more good news. We thought we'd try to... We try to um, end on a more positive note here. Um, when you think of, of 
uh, the community that's out there that talks about this sector. Again, when we started covering this sector, and I've been doing this for 20 years, but about eight years ago, we really said, hey, this is a sector we should focus on. It's kind of viewed as, as sort of a uh, bottom of the marketing mix, uh, but we see changes with mobile. We think this sector is going to be uplifted, and that's the reason why we as bankers said, let's focus hard on this sector. Um, this was actually pretty noticeable to see that you know, publicly on an earnings call, everybody's actually now noticing out of home and saying, going back to that and saying, hmm, this is a channel we should refocus on. And it really backs up a lot of what we've seen in some of the conversations we've been having. Obviously, this was on an earnings call for WPP. So uh, last slide here. I don't know if there's any more questions before I just dive through this last slide. So in conclusion, look, I think ultimately, um, you know, the risk around digital and what happens in terms of t uh, taking new ad spend, is it going to take more? Uh, the real risk behind that. Uh, the music, we like to say the music has stopped, um, you know, other than streaming. <laughs> so, so we think there's going to be a real reckoning for traditional media, a tremendous pressure um, in terms of all the other media channels. We think Out of Home is going to be okay, but we don't see, unless Out of Home really does collaborate, really come together and figure out how to address uh, the opportunities that are in front of it, which are, again, we've addressed them all, but all the ability to become accountable, make it easier to be bought and sold. Everything we've said publicly, if that all can happen, we do see an ability for Out of Home to not only defend its share, but take more share in a massive way. And if you think about that, and you say, well, what happens if Out of Home went from 4% penetration to 5% or 6% penetration? I mean, that's billions of dollars, right? But what happens if Out of Home were to shrink to 3.5% or 3%? That would be, in our view, a disaster for the industry. Many companies would go bankrupt. Um, it would be very tough because you see tremendous top-line pressure at many of these businesses um, that, in our view, would have a very tough time um, surviving long-term. So with that, continued investment in technology, we think, is obviously an answer. Uh, we think Out of Home is poised to grow share. Um, but we do obviously think there are real challenges. And again, the, the key point here is you know, selling audiences and attribution is the key for growth. With that, we're done. And I don't know if there's any last minute questions before um, we say goodbye. And thank you for your time. Yep. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, right, right up here first. Yeah, uh, he, he had a. Uh, so we, uh, we just we tweeted it out last night. So it's, it's on, uh, if you go to, oh, go back to our first slide here. Oh, I don't know if we can. There we go. But you can see my Twitter Twitter uh, feed is there, uh, at M. Boydman. Our slides are right there available. But you can also, if you email us, they'll be on our website, pjsolomon.com. Actually, I think, Ben, they are on our website already, right? Yeah, they're, they're on our website. Uh, so all these slides are available. Mark, Dave Westbrook, Billboard Insider. What, in your view, is the sustainable level of debt for an out-of-home company in today's environment? Uh, is it public or private? Private uh, why, why don't you take both? Yeah, let's start with, different. with private companies. I mean, we've seen private companies take leverage beyond seven, eight times. With the securitization, which is a type of financing with a bankruptcy remote vehicle, uh, we've seen leverage well north of seven times. Uh, for public outdoor companies, what is a sustainable leverage? I mean, it's hard to say. I think it can vary. Uh, we've seen public out-of-home companies, obviously, with well north of five, six times leverage. Um, you know, it's probably somewhere in that four to five times area. Um, but again, um, you know, our view is, is it all depends on the, the business. Um, what, what is creating that leverage? Um, are they focused on acquisitions, focused on investment? Um, private companies, though, easily. I mean, we've gone in, Ben and I have pitched with a straight face, you know, taking leverage well north of seven times, even eight times in some cases. Really depends on the business.